우리가 나갈래 마지? 엔디빈딘 미시 아기당 시마가 보고 말려서 사가 오늘 엔디빈딘 미시 봐봐 방지나 두부 다갈 사바 다봐야 나 엉엉 다갈 사바 다봐야 아롤 모자 아가씨 오늘 오늘 시앙당하지 봐 오늘 그 모자 못못했다서 Jem de malir ya re. Ah ya India nung ya ro ba ni nung de me. Ni sung da ma jung. Na ga nung na ga nung te pata nduk ma ba ba nda. Da se nung ba ro di. Ya te pata nduk se. Da se nung. U de le ma nung ni mses ba men nung ga lia se nung je. Ah ya. Ah ne amang ba isu amang. Ha ga ni nung ba e bo. Isu amia. Bai bu tim de mat tak nungan de balu anu kita ma jung nya ko ngang ta bai ma ba je ata nya ko ngalu unu ge ta kam tu se dai ndu ko se bo u de le ma ya i ba ti an ngi mi le la as the lonely streets of chuchu imlang a quaint and sleepy town of distant nagaland play a sad tune a lone octogenarian seems to frequent them with an undying enthusiasm taking account of everything in his way <laughs> limited activities makes life here almost stand still but oblivion to everything his steps do not stop and one can see that as he moves forward He carries with him a legacy of unconditional love, affection, and pride. The era of independence was not an easy one. Insult, pain, and helplessness were a regular routine. The atmosphere was charged with intense revolution. Rallies, meetings, of attacks all diverse means were engaged to achieve freedom difficult and trying situations forced people to see themselves in a different light the prevailing situations saw many legends being created and natwar thakkar is one of them born in 1932 to chabil das thakkar and Lilawati. Natwar belonged to a business class family, a Gujarati-speaking family in the coastal town of Dahanu in Maharashtra. It was assumed that he would naturally take over the family business after his father. But Thakkar's calculation of life was different. In the run to freedom, the father of the nation was omnipresent. It was but difficult for anyone to remain aloof from it. The entire country was swaying in unison to his ideas. Naturally, the Mahatma's words and ideals had a conscious and gradual impression on the young mind of 23-year-old Natwar. Even the streets saw children playing games unwarily demanding liberty. while mother sang patriotic songs as lullabies the one song uh, was very frequently sung was vijay vishwa tiranga pyara jhanda uncha rahe hamara that was the thing we will always sing that and then uh, <laughs> uh, as young people when we used to when our procession used to pass through mission hospital we'll raised the slogan in english you will up up the national flag down down the union jack that's <laughs> the thing i we used to sing with all gusto we, we didn't know much difference about american british white skin person so we were uh, ruled by white skin person can you tell me about your first experience of seeing mahatma gandhi it was in Uh, on my railway station that i saw him first 
the entire town was empty and they had assembled on the platform. It was such a great thing that Gandhiji will be passing through. I was a schoolboy, very much excited, very curious, and uh, it was a great excitement, feeling of uh, experiencing bliss that we, uh, we could see Gandhi, we had a glimpse of Gandhi. Long years ago, we made a Soon, the August day of 1947 saw independence. The nation was rejoicing. The fight had finally come to an end. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. However, as the sand settled, there was a realization that the price paid for independence was too high. The joy of independence did not last for very long. In the zeal to oust the invader, differences within the comrades were emerging. The entire nation was falling apart. The country saw partitions within partition. Communal violence and Holocaust. All this had to come to an end and the nation was going to pay the price again. The sudden demise of Mahatma shook the nation. Oh. Hey, I remember that I heard uh, Panditji's famous speech when he said that light is no more. Then he says that, no, I, I was wrong. It is a light which will shone with greater strength. He was very emotional in your speaking. I heard that thing. Then I didn't eat that day. The next day also I didn't feel like eating anything. I was just wondering why, that why should such a great man be killed like that? And one effect I remember was that uh, Prior to that day, Hindu-Muslim riots were frequent. D different places, these riots, killing, mutual killing and all this. But after that news, suddenly the killing stopped everywhere. This is one thing I recall. And then as far as me personally concerned, that if Gandhi was killed because of disunity between Hindus and Muslims, then I thought that the best field of working was to work for emotional integration, to bring people together. As the nation composed, the realization that winning independence was easy, but keeping it intact was a task seemed inevitable. The diverse cultures, varied interests, and lack of a common platform compelled the strong and silent fighters of independence to take the lead and emerge as a second generation of leaders. Personalities like Benova Bhavi, Jai Prakash, Lohia and Kakka Sahib leaped into the arena of selfless voluntary service to keep the ideas of Gandhi alive. I grew up in nationalistic atmosphere. The entire country was charged with nationalism. That impact was higher in case of younger people. Though I was young, I uh, could f understand the kind of agony that country passed through soon after our partition. Hyderabad wanted to be independent. Jain Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir wanted to be independent. When these things were going on, the secession from India by Naga community also arose. When I completed my tra training at Sevagram, I rejoined Kaka Sahib because he was appointed as Chairman of Backward Classes Commission. The commission went round the country. In two locations he spent his time, uh, the commission spent maximum number of time. One was Himachal Pradesh, another was Assam. Kaka Sahib used to get some notings from government about the movement in Nagaland, the secessionist movement in Nagaland. Initially, I didn't opt to work for Nagaland. I opted to work in Himachal Pradesh. But when this thing was going on, the 
then commissioner for caste and tribes mr l m shrikant he came to me uh, he he went to kaka saheb and said that sir you are sending your um, student to himachal pradesh but we need people in assam we we need people to work in assam why don't you send him to assam so he said himachal pradesh was his choice if you think that his services would can be utilized in assam you better speak to him if he agrees i will bless him so mr shrikant came to me he asked me i want you to go to assam i said all right i will go to assam doesn't matter in fact to tell you frankly with my uh, euphoria of younger age and all that when he said work in nagaland i was happy i said i couldn't play any part in winning india's freedom but here is an opportunity where i would like to play my part in integrating india in bringing creating a bridge with between nagaland and rest of the country dating to more than 5 decades back nagaland was not a very prospective venture just as its lands of forests rivers and mist the images of its residents too were not of a very clear one known as the head hunters the fearless warriors were fighting a personal war within themselves for identity and dignity nagaland had earned the crown of being a land of magic mystery and myths in those days the backward classes members some people were there uh one he one was an mp he said from south india where are you going i said i am going to nagaland how much money they are going to give you i said we have worked out and we said we i need 300 rupees per month so thing and uh, that should be all right for me you want to get your head cut for 300 rupees he said <laughs> I, I, i said that is not important I want to go and work and serve my country in the best possible. Despite everything, Natwar decided to make the journey. On his maiden visit to Chuchu Yimlang with Kaka Saheb, all his inhibitions seemed to fade. The virgin hills, the sparkling streams, the misty sky and oriental faces all beckoned Thakkar. It was love. at first sight this was a treasured moment and he wanted to capture it forever an ace photographer as he shot on reel these images were making an imprint in his heart eternally his resolution to come back here and make this place his second home was engraved On the 27th of April 1955 Natwal reached Chuchuimlan I arrived uh, on 18th April according to my thing in 55 So there was slight drizzle and uh, fog so not a very clear clear climate on that day When I reached here some people received me the next day the village elders came and met me otherwise on this road side i think all together five families were staying and then i became the sixth one when i came natwar realized that to get in touch with the people learn their ways and understand their emotions was the call of the day so when an occasion for a hindi teacher presented itself he grabbed the opportunity much with a hidden interest he knew that in the process of teaching those naga children hindi he would come one step ahead in learning their language and that's how his journey into their lives started one thing that caught natwar's attention in the village was that the condition of hygiene was appalling with a little bit of his first aid knowledge from school a table two stools 
some cotton, iodine, and disprints, his clinic was set. Soon, his first patient had arrived, a small little child infected with scabies. With a few things in place, he was now ready to concentrate on the actual motive of his journey to the Naga Hills, to promote national and emotional integration on the Gandhian lines through his services. As a result, the Gandhi Ashram was finally established on 2nd of October 1955. For me, Gandhi was important. I want this, my organization to be named as Gandhi Ashram. Uh, so, uh, then, as I said, I wanted to see that whatever I can do, and, the, and the, uh, we have said that we will work on, uh, we will uh, render service on Gandhian lines. So Gandhian lines means what? Helping the needy. And as I was telling you this morning, Kaka Sahib had given me agenda. So I concentrated in fulfilling that agenda. Then I slowly found that there were some happy reactions from the local community. And gradually, at least a small section of people stood by me, stood with me. Conversely, this was proving harder than Natwar had anticipated. Day-to-day -day hardships and struggles were making the mission unpredictable. There was no running water. So, uh, we took climb down almost half a kilometer. There was a water pond. So there we used to go, I used to wash my clothes myself, not a good person at working with hands and all that. But I, nobody else would do it, I had to do it. I had to wash my clothes and I used to carry my bucket and had my bath in the stream itself. When I used to come back from pond and reach home, by then the another bath of sweat it had taken place by then. But it was another difficulty. Lack of bus service also. I done two occasions. Uh, I had to go to Makukchung to withdraw some money from bank. So there was no bus, nothing of the sort. So I went on foot. Twice I went on foot. Of course, a problem, but also a challenge. The rumors that we kept on getting that militants are unhappy over your arrival. The Naga Hills were under ferment at that moment. In the background of all these events, cultivating the Nagas was a Herculean task. But the urge to remain and make a change was being nourished by a silent force, the love of his life. Lantina Ao was the sole Naga woman to be trained as a Gandhian voluntary worker at the Kasturba Ashram in Guwahati. It was during this time that Thakkar and she came to know each other closely. A compatible couple right from the beginning. Their vision, their thoughts and principles were all on the same wavelength. <laughs> Main company, it was easy. So it was friendship. Friendship was strengthened. So we decided to be a party. We were a party. We were a party. We were a party. We were ultimately they blessed Christian ceremony Hindu ceremony registration special marriage Arumakukchung was disturbed by then. Aru, 
with enthusiasm they participated. Our Mae at a golden chain, like a dog. Bounded by faith and not by religion, they pledged their vows to be together till death did them apart. They did it all with poise and dignity, from adorning the beautiful Mekhala Sadar to the robust tribal attire, and then to the very traditional Gujarati joint family picture. Then the militant threats were also there. Uh, it, it's a challenge. It caused some worry. But I, to tell you frankly, I didn't take them very seriously. I said, all right, they are threatening. What, I, they, don't, they may not mean what they say. But rice was stopped. The men who was were, uh, engaged for cooking, he was threatened, so he left us. The second man came, he also left. But after a few days, the, he came back again. He said, I will not leave now, even if I get threatened. Slowly and gradually, the picture was turning blurry. Chuchu Himlang was no longer the tranquil and peaceful abode of his dreams. A small police detachment was fired upon. A company of armed police were stationed in the charge. Three persons from Chuchu Yimlang were kidnapped and killed. And for the first time in his life, he experienced a strong brush with death. We were hiding in this hut at night when the attack took place. It was on 9 October 1957. 9 October I remember because it was my birthday. <laughs> What followed for the next three decades was a life full of turmoil, insecurities, and uncertainties. Two, three more incidences, like uh, when the chief, first chief minister of Nagaland visited the village. Uh, I think at that time my mother was pregnant with my third brother. There was a lot of welcome things were happening and. Uh, um, Everybody stood on the roadside and, you know, waiting for him to come. And suddenly shooting starts. I was just standing there. I didn't know what's happening. And one of my mother's cousins, he pulled me from one side and push, pulled me into one of the nalas. That nala is still there. And I was made to lie down there for I don't know how long. And I just kept lying there. I didn't know what's happening. And... Uh, Later on when he came looking for me, his hands were all blood and shirt was kurta white. He always used to wear white. Kurta was full of blood. And the moment I saw the blood, I started crying. I didn't know what was happening. And um, of course, one or two of the boys were shot. So he was handling the body and you know that's why his clothes were soiled. <laughs> An indomitable spirit, not to advise conviction for truth, was his sole weapon. Today, he is an inevitable part of the Naga history, a mentor for the future generation and a legend of the hills. You had a woman, right? That's about the city. Oh, 